failure came when I had to join my university, which was two hours walk from my home up on the hills. All my friends abandoned me because they decided to take the public transport to cover up the distance. So I had to design my own pace and find new friends. I looked around and found my friends in the blue sky and the pines of Sri Lanka. And I started my pioneering journey of two plus two hours each day to my university. Gradually, I realized that my choice for walking lifestyle started giving me many benefits. As I started walking, I realized that I was becoming more observant. I was becoming seasoned on weather walker because my economics lessons in the classes were so exciting, I never wanted to miss any of my discourse in the classes. So every day I used to walk my long journey. As I was walking through the main district, economic district of Sri Lanka, I used to test the laws that I used to learn in the class against the reality all around me. And I became a very good observer. I realized this power of observation and my thinking mind became my companion. And in hindsight, I feel that those thinking mind and power of observation and my training in theoretical and empirical research and economics tools made my inclination for taking up empirical research in the later part of my life. As time passed by, I moved to Kolkata to do my PhD. It was in 1979. My mother decided to take a residence near Jadhapur University so that I can walk. So in the new city, I had no friends. But I already broke that barrier because I had very two good friends. My observing senses and my thinking mind. And my supervisor was introducing me to the new literature emerging in applied economics. That was in energy and environmental economics. And with my rapid progress and thinking mind, my motion sickness was disappearing because my mind was walking faster than everything that was outside. So as I started my new readings, then I realized that the new emerging field of energy and environmental economics in the post-1973 oil price crisis is emerging very fast. And literature is trying to understand how the industrial transformation, the main economic actor in the world at that time, was struggling to stay on business. And how they were innovating and how they were trying to fit and transform. So they were stretching their innovation and they were transforming themselves. A new era of industrial transformation actually started from there very silently. I was getting interested also to know how Indian industries might be doing. And I also found that in the literature, the theoretical tools are also changing very fast because the literature was trying to change from restricted production function approach to flexible transcendental production function to understand the producer's behavior. But I found another hurdle now. 
because I could see this literature is trying to see, use very large data set, and we're also trying to use computer programming. I realized my skill with scientific calculator is not going to fulfill my dream. I have to learn computer programming. Many people advise me, why not engage an expert who can write your programs for solving the simultaneous econometric models? And you can get the results. But I realized, unless I myself learn this skill, I'll not be able to stay longer in this field of application in economics, which is emerging fast. So, as I said, my choice of lifestyle of walking gave me so much. I used to walk from my home to the Department of Economics and used to pass through the Regional Computer Center, which was an emerging <coughs> institute at that time in Jadavpur University campus. One day I saw in the wall of the RCC building, there is a notice which is saying they have got a new mainframe computer, Barrows, and they are looking for users because machine time is remaining idle. And they were going to impart free training in computer programming in Fortran language. So I thought that I'm in the right place at the right moment with the right mindset. I got myself enrolled. I got trained in computer programming. And with help from many people, I could code my own econometric model and could solve. And eventually, I got my PhD. And then I realized the findings are showing me that Indian industries are actually lagging far behind the whole global industrial transformation that was happening. And what were the reasons? Because the energy prices were relatively much, much lower compared to labor and capital prices. So industries were trying to save on labor and capital and not on energy. So we came up with many policy suggestions, and at that time, Things were also changing at the macro perspective. Many new policies were emerging, and we got our research published as a book. On the ground, things were changing, continued to change. And what I did was, in 1997, I got Ford Foundation postdoctoral fellowship in environmental economics to go to Berkeley. As I went to International Energy Program of Energy Environmental Technology Division of Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, I found there, to my pleasant surprise, a whole set of researchers with various disciplinary backgrounds. Day and night are sitting together to solve energy environment problem simultaneously. And they were trying to see how to break the barriers for new technology, new economic systems, new political system, new policy regime. I found my natural collaborators there. One year passed by very fast, but it was very productive. And I could publish my work in 1999 to show that, indeed, Indian industries are changing their behavior, and they are transforming. But till then, it was not the right time for carbon price, because introduction of carbon price would disrupt the productivity, would reduce economic growth, and would reduce human well-being. It was not only me. Many scientists 
from all over the world, from different countries, were deriving the same evidences, empirical evidences from their research. So I came back to Jadhpur University. I started the Global Change Program with my colleagues from different disciplines within the university. My collaboration with Lawrence Buckley Lab continued, it continues till date. And what I realized was that many researchers, young researchers, are joining us to understand how the economies are transforming, how industries are transforming. Our research continued and we started collaborating with the policymakers. And many of our research were very useful in influencing the international negotiation processes. So when we started new research, interestingly we found at the ground level, things never stopped. They continued changing. Industries were transforming. Silently, we never understand, but empirically we could see that industries, a second industrial revolution really happened. And that was with energy efficiency improvement. And less and less of energy were getting used for production process in the large industries like steel, cement, paper, pulp, fertilizers, aluminum, all were transforming their production processes. In two and a half decades, industrial, in that Indian industries changed their production processes through engineering solutions and new innovations. And this was true globally. And so the story, story changed. And the story became that which was the story of coupled growth of energy and activity growth, which was one unit of output needed one unit of energy in 70s. Today you can see how through engineering solutions and new innovations and technologies, there is decoupling of industrial activity growth from energy growth. How did we do this? because of the increasing energy efficiency. This, tra this transformed the world. But we wanted to know why the industries are changing. And we could discuss with the industry experts and looked into the official statistics. And these are all evidence-based, available, readily. And we chose that it is the market cost competitiveness. It's the influence of policy. It's the price consideration and consumer demand and exportability, which are triggering changes for industrial transformation. But we could also realize that still a long way to go towards mission decarbonization. Energy efficiency could bring us the low carbon trajectory, but it is not going to be enough to go towards zero carbon trajectory or negative carbon trajectory very fast. And how to get to this place? And we realized that we do need some new policies, some new actions to achieve these financial barriers, to overcome these financial barriers towards zero carbon and negative carbon. Very interestingly, our research continued and we had to come up with the conclusion in 2016, which is just the reverse of what we said in the literature in 1999. And we found that today, the industrial transformation and other economic activity transformations are at such a stage, it's a big hope, big hope that further transformation, further acceleration is possible. You saw in Paris, 
the policy makers pledged for reduction through energy efficiency, etc. But scientific studies are showing that that is needed with energy efficiency, but it's not going to be enough to deliver the mission decarbonization. So what do we need? Our studies are showing, and which we published in 2016, which contradicts our 1999 results and shows that this is the right time for carbon price. Because carbon price now shows empirically that this will be encouraging further innovation. Productivity will not go down. Productivity will rise. We'll give an opportunity to all the economic actors a freedom to make their own choice about lifestyle and production processes. It's a fantastic instrument because it is inclusive and it is fair. Doesn't matter whether you have motion sickness or not, you can make the choice. Whether you want to walk, take the public transport, or take the meat. Industries can make a choice how to go beyond energy efficiency and how they can make a choice either for solar power or wind power or thorium-based power. New technology development is happening. Hydrogen fuel. And all these things can happen if there is innovation and innovation part. And that can come from the carbon price. This is not only me and my team from Jaduk University showing. From all over the world, from all countries, this is becoming very apparent now. Along with Paris Agreement, we do need to ramp up with carbon price. And this will provide my Shillong an opportunity to invest more in keeping their greenery as a carbon stock and provide the blue sky without any air pollution and enrich themselves with carbon money. So we are at a juncture. Like we were in 1973 with oil crisis. Oil price triggered 30 year long transformation process. Carbon price can do 30 year long transformation fast enough to achieve mission decarbonization. As we continued our research, the question remains, is the society ready? My SILF fellows from 2003 are asking this hard question. What makes the tradition to change? What changes the societal mind? What brings in the societal change? Who brings in these changes? Which can break barriers for humanity's progress towards enhancing human well-being. It's in the language of my still fellows. They say, we need to think hard out of the box. We need to analyze. We need to brainstorm. And we need to continue our research to solve the societal problem and break all the barriers. Because we can see the horizons open up. And with human ingenuity and indomitable spirit, we will be able to break all the barriers. Thank you very much.